Hello, and welcome to The Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and The Kosh spotlights people who've had an association with The Kosh and the surrounding Fox Cities area. How are we doing, Kosh listeners? It is a fantastic day. It is Super Bowl Sunday. I always just like to uh, share what day it is. I know when this gets released, it's not. Y'all going to be like, oh, man, that, that's a, that was a while ago. But nonetheless, at least I can frame the energy of the day. I'm actually excited about the Super Bowl. I could care less about who's actually playing. I am in it for the snacks. There is usually a beautiful spread that goes on in the Smith household, and I am all about this. So I'm hopeful that it will involve some chicken wings and some nachos and and a charcuterie board, which I'm pretty sure because my wife does spoil me that these things are going to happen this Super Bowl Sunday. And I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about that. But outside of that, it is a sunny Sunday, which I'm always happy when it's sunny in Wisconsin in the winter. It's it's better than a gloomy one. Right. All right. So I think we're about ready to uh, we're going to get started now. Before we get started, started, let me just say this. I am really excited about this guest. Now, me and this guest, we we we've been playing the 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 calendar game. Hey, can 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 I get on your calendar? Can I get on your calendar? Can can is this gonna work? Is this gonna work? I don't know, you know, so but they're busy. They're really busy. So the fact that I finally got them here for Kosh listeners to have this conversation makes me super excited. But even more so, let me just say this, y'all. You know what I'm about to say. You know where I'm going with this. I don't know why I continue to get these amazing, amazing guests. And this week is no different. So without further ado. All right. This week's guest is Lona Young. Hey, Lona. What's going on? Oh, what's not going on? First of all, let me thank you for having me here. And I'm glad that we were finally able to meet up because our schedules are crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm I, I'm going to be honest. I think your schedule is crazier than mine. You got things going on. I do. And uh, when I'm not working, I'm traveling to Chicago or Milwaukee, grabbing inventory, visiting family helping volunteering in the community so yeah oh yeah yeah like we having on. a whole lot going on well we gonna learn about your whole lot that's going on in this episode that's what i'm hoping because the kosh listeners need to know absolutely absolutely okay well you know let's let's get ready to just jump right in can you please share a little something about yourself and what's your connection to the kosh in the surrounding fox cities area Well, a little bit about myself. I am originally from Chicago. I have been in the Valley for 25 years. Bruh. And I love it here. I actually transferred to this area with a mortgage company that I used to work for. And when I first got here, I was like, "Mm." (laughs) 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 baby, I'm from the city. And that's fast and moving. Then you come here and you're like, what year is it here? (laughs) <laughs> not the what year is it <laughs> like, i told my boss baby i don't think i'm gonna be able to stay i said i don't know if i can do this i was like mm. i was like and plus i haven't seen anyone that look like me i'm from the city with so much diversity and you bring me here y'all don't even have a bus system where's the train bruh <laughs> and he's like a what i was like oh my god y'all don't have public transportation you don't have a train you don't have a subway i was like Oh, my God. But I stuck it out. It it worked out. I think what really made me stay was the cost of living here versus the cost of living in Chicago. I was like, wow, this is how much rent is? What's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. I was like, is it missing some doors or windows? Like, is it in the hood? When I, when I was talking to the landlord, I took it over the phone, and I'm asking her, like, all these questions. I'm like, do I have roaches? I was like... Do, do, oh my blood God, yes. when it rained why is it only $450 and she's like what What are you talking about I said let me tell you something lady I said I'm going to send you my money but when I get there if this place is like hooded I want my coins back and she was like it's a nice place so I finally drive down and I come to it and I see it and I'm like 
is this rent control? Is this like Section 8? I'm like, what's the catch? And she was like, what's wrong with this girl? I'm like, I'm from the city. You don't find a two-bedroom apartment for $450. I'm like, this will easily be about two grand in the suburbs, in a nice neighborhood. And she's like, oh, no, it's only $450. I'm like, whoa. I'm going to read the lease. I've never read a lease right down to the fine print because I just couldn't believe the price. I said, give me a day. I read the lease. I signed it. I gave it back to her. She's like, are you good? I'm like, I'm good. Um, but I'm still a little bit nervous about this rent. I was like, oh, this better not be like one of them things in six months. It go up $500 and another six months, 500. She's like, no. So I was like, yeah, I need to stay here. God mm-hmm. must tell me you, you got to be here. It's affordable. And it, it was peaceful. Yes. I missed the city. So I will, my first year here, every weekend, every weekend. Oh, wow, that's expensive. Off. When you're in your 20s. <laughs> no. Yeah, you don't care. You don't care. Mm-mm. You just care about, man, none of my friends are here. They don't have real clubs. They don't have the hole in the walls. There's no downtown Chicago nightlife to kick it. There's no mom and pop restaurants. So every weekend, I was snowstorming. Want to see my friends for about, I would say probably for the first two years. By that third year, I was like, mm, I ain't doing that. You was done with it. I was tired of driving. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this anymore. But I loved it. And then um, I started getting involved in the community, volunteering with different organizations. I didn't have any children, but I had custody of two of my brothers. So they were in school. So anything that they was doing, I was active. And I made it a point to be extremely active because at the time, there was no one in the school that looked like them. It was it. It was just them. So I wanted to make sure that they knew, hey, this parent is present and active and want to know everything that's going on because I'm mama bear and I'm here to protect. Like, I need to make sure that they're okay because they were also experiencing something different. They're coming from city public school where it's so much diversity to a school where... It was them. It was just them. Right. So every day they're coming home, I'm like asking them questions. Like, how was it? How did it go? Was everybody nice to you? They're like, yeah, you're tripping. I wouldn't even let them walk to school. Well, I look, here's the funny thing. If you're talking about a while ago, how old are they now? The baby boy is 31. Okay. So that was a while ago. Back then, yeah, I, I wouldn't have been too worried. Now I'd be a little more worried than I was back then, to be perfectly Isn't honest. Isn't that crazy how times change? And that's just because, of it, I believe it's because of politics. It, it, there's just been this whole thing where things have been, we've gotten in a habit of un- dehumanizing each other and, and doing doing unkind things to each other. But back then it was just ignorance and unfamiliarity. Yes. Right. And so, yeah, did you run into some stuff? Show. Did, but did I feel in danger? No. No, most of it, people were, I would say, polite about their ignorance, if that's the right way to word that. I think it fits. <laughs> and um, Now, they're not polite. They don't care. They're rude. And you're just like, but why? Why? Why is that even necessary? Right. But we, we, we survived it. The boys made it through school. I remember when the oldest started East and they were like starting to do like Black History Month stuff. Mm. And I don't think they've ever done it. But I think by that time they were starting to, it was starting to get a little bit more diverse. Right. And they wanted to make sure that they were like catering to the kids and their culture. And Edward comes home and he's like, hey, they want you to cook something at the school for Black History Month. And at first I was offended by it. Like, so the only thing we can cook? <laughs> mm. oh. And I was like, I don't know what to make. And he was like, just make macaroni. Everybody like macaroni. So I made baked mac and cheese and sweet potato pie. And I sent it to the school. He comes back with all these phone numbers. I said, what are these numbers? My teachers want you to make them some. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I was like, no, I'm not doing that at all. I said, because then I got to commit. And once you commit to something, you have to complete it. I'm always big on once you commit, you have to complete. Correct. And I was like, no, 
And they were reaching out and reaching out. And I finally did it, but I had to let them know one time because I can't commit to this because I can't promise you that I can complete it all the time with three boys and working full time and basketball practice and all this stuff they were signed up to do. Right. (laughs) So, yeah. So that's about it so far. I I don't know. I just I'm still tripping on the 25. So 25, you got 25 in here. I got 25 years. Isn't that crazy? Well, I, I mean, would... it's crazy that I didn't meet you until more recently cuz I've been here for 30 plus. You've been here 30 years? 30 plus. Wow. So I mean, it, you know, the way those connections go, we should have been met each other about two decades ago. Yeah, and then you see the change in the community. When I was here, we only had, first, we had the one Walmart. And now you look around and we have street lights and houses and places where it used to be farmland and back roads. And you're like, wow, they done built the whole community. So it's nice to see the growth in the community. Like, oh, it's really growing. It's really, really growing. So that part, I love. Like, okay, I made a good decision. All right. You know what I also like is the universe was trying to tell you something back then, apparently, because the universe was saying, Lona, you need to cook. You need to go and cook for these people. You know, it's so crazy that you said that because for all of our family events, I am the person that puts the family reunion together, all of the family get togethers. And because I am a control person, I do all the cooking. I want mm-hmm. everything. Bruh. You you said it out loud, okay? I want everything neat and order. And so when the business happened, it was it was just so it just came so naturally and it wasn't even something that I was planning to do starting the hoagie shop. It literally started from a post on Facebook. Isn't that crazy? Well then, you know what? First we got to tell the listeners that you have a business. What is this business? It's Chicago's House of Hoagies, located at 1089 Racine Road in Menasha, Wisconsin, right next to Calder Stadium, right off the 441 Racine exit. Mm. Let me tell you something, y'all. I done been there. I done been there. It is fantastic. There's a vibe. You know what I really like about it? I like the people that come in there. And you could just, there's love. Like they showing up for a reason. Like they they're looking forward to the food, but they also looking forward to the experience of being in your space. So let me tell you, when I first decided to do it, I was like, what we all have something that we really loved about our childhood growing up. No matter if you grew up in trauma or you grew up with a silver spoon, it was something about your childhood that you just want to hold on to that was just amazing, that made you feel safe, that made you didn't have to think about anything. And for me, when I was starting the uh, the hoagie shop, it was like, I want to make sure I create a neighborhood, old school feel where everybody knew everybody's name. We looked out for each other's kids. We looked out for each other. You could come in, you can vibe to the music, you can play chess you can just hang out you you ain't even got to buy anything you want to come in there and just vibe to the music you can do that if you're having a bad day and you just want to be around good people you can do that and I wanted to create that because that's missing in our communities I think it's not only missing in the communities it's just missing in the world today I figure if we can create places of business with good vibes imagine what you can do like if you're changing a person's vibe you're changing their understanding of how they think about a person based on race gender all of that religion all of it oh yes so that's that's what i set out to do so i i want i made an old school feel like when you come in there you see the old school chalkboard and everybody's like oh why you want to do that it's technology you should do digital I said, when I was growing up and we went to the neighborhood hoagie shops in the back of the corner store, everything was chalkboard. You know, let's keep it old school. Let's we don't need all the extra technology. Keep it old school because people can relate to old school. Oh, yeah. People can work technology, but they like old school. Old school don't get old. (laughs) Old school don't get old.
I like that. It doesn't. It doesn't. I love it. Even our Chicago's known for house music. I'll play house music in it, and you'll have like this army vet to come in and he'll be jamming, and you're like, you know, oh, you know, house music. He's like, I was stationed in Chicago and we used to go to parties and listen to house music and him and the wife would be dancing. And you're like, wow, if you met them on the street, you would have never known that they like house music. But because they don't came into this establishment, this black owned business that's from the South side of Chicago. And now they can listen to music that they probably can't listen to with their friends because their friends can't relate to it or judge them. Right. You can come. And listen to whatever you want in my restaurant. Come by, have any type of conversations. And then also giving people the experience, that father or that mother who took their kids to White Sox Park, you know, and it's like, oh, my God, the hot dogs were amazing. Or they went to the Taste of Chicago. They ain't got to drive that far now. Mm. You can get that whole Chicago vibe right in Manasha now. Mm. I know people be traveling to go to your joint. They do. Oh, my God. So. You know, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. No, I know you was doing all that now. So I did not realize TikTok was the bomb. Like, I didn't know that. So at first I was doing it like, this is such a waste of time. Why am I doing this? But everybody's like, you got to get on TikTok. And I'm like, tell me why I got a customer come all the way. They were traveling to Green Bay anyway from Texas. I came up on their TikTok feed. They messaged me like, how far are you from Green Bay? And I sent them the address. I'm like, maybe 20, 30 minutes. They're like, we're driving from Texas to Green Bay and we're going to stop in your restaurant. They're like, you're all over TikTok and your food looks amazing. And they came in Hmm. and they enjoyed it. So I was like, wow. So the the social media stuff does work. Oh, yeah. It it worked, but you got to work it. As small business owners, we have to remember, you have to promote yourself. You can't expect other people to promote you if you're not willing to do the work. And it's a lot of work. It is. I am on there. I post, I think, seven times a day, five posts, two reels. Oh, for real? Absolutely. Yes, I do. But you can schedule them. So, like, I can do all my posts for the week. I can sit and schedule them. That way I don't have to actively be sitting there doing it. But sometimes I forget and I have to like do them. But getting them in, what happens is those social media platforms see that you're posting so much. They then start pushing you and putting your ad on other pages because you're working your page. And I always tell people, if you've got companies like Sheen and Walmart and Target, on social media, pushing their pay, their their business. What makes you think as a small business owner, you don't have to do the same? You got to work that much harder. They got a multi-billion dollar company. They got somebody doing it for them. Hey, you you over here making me feel bad. Like I need to, I need to take Lona's social media course. You like step your game up on the social media. I do. Well, you know what? I already know that. I'm I'm not strong strong on the social media but i'm gonna have to show you and then facebook pays you when you start posting correctly okay yes i got my first three checks they was only like 30 bucks but i'm like hey that's okay and you gotta have at least ten thousand followers i only got like eight thousand on facebook i think almost ten thousand on tiktok Mm. oh yeah you're doing it big it was big to me Well, in order for anything in your life that you're doing to be successful, you got to put in the work. It's like planting a garden and never watering it and getting upset because the veggies didn't grow. Well, you just planted the seed, baby. You still got to work it. You got to water it. You got to give it sunlight. That's right. And uh, you got to nurture it. Yes. And that's what I see so many small business owners when they be like, oh, my business didn't work. Well, you planted the seed, baby. Did you work the garden? You got to work it. So, yes, it's a lot of work and it's not for the weak. Facts. Your brain never turns off. You are always thinking about what can I do better? What can I change? How can I make things cheaper? You're always looking for 
um, less expensive vendors. You're always networking. You're always looking to grow and be better than you was the day before. And it don't turn off. You go to sleep with that on your mind. You wake up. You wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh, my God. I I know what hoagie I'm going to create in the morning. (laughs) And it literally is like that. Most of my biggest seller hoagies, I create in the middle of the night. Or while I'm sleeping, I wake up and I'll get up and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to run to the restaurant real quick. I'm going to make this. I'm going to test it out. And it works. Like my Ford City hoagie is probably one of my most basic hoagies. It has sliced chicken deli meat, tomatoes and onions, mayo, pepper jack cheese, provolone cheese, salt, pepper, olive oil, and cheese potato chips on an ungrilled hoagie roll. And when I tell you... It's something about that hoagie that says childhood fire hydrant. I got to get home before the street lights. Did she just hit me with that double Dutch rope? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> it just like when you can make food that make people go back to their childhood. Oh, oh yeah. God. You got them. You got them. And em. I'm learning that people like chips on their hoagies. I have like, I think like six of them all different with different type of chips and potato chips. And they, they are popular. Oh, I like, look, I'm with you because I'm all about a sandwich. And then if I got the sandwich, I got to make sure I had the right type of chip to put on my sandwich. Cause I love the crunch. It's the texture. So Doritos work. I love Doritos. My other ones is Ruffles. Now, if I'm going to have any ruffle, I'm going to get the, the cheese. Uh, what is what, the, cheese something sour cream and sour cheese. cream and cheese ones now them is the perfect for the sandwich and then i like to crunch it down like i take it from that fred flintstone stat- status and, and get it mouth size and give it a crunch and break it up a little bit and then it's like every bite so it sticks to the roof of your mouth mm, well see i actually like a toasted sandwich preferably okay because that's just, that's just me you know i like the cr- i like texture in my sandwich like there's something to it. The flavor is one thing, but actually, what is it when you bite into it? Can I hear that thing? Is it talking to me? I want a little bit of, you know, and a little breakaway. Like I like a crisp breakaway when I take that bite. Look, sandwiches are my thing. I think sandwiches are love. They are. They um, it just gives you happy memories, and you just. I watch my customers and they be in such a zone when they're eating my food, which makes my spirit just smile like mm, she did that. Or when they sit and they eat and they're like, you know what? I'm going to order another one to take it home to eat it for later. That's when you know what you're doing is good. And, you, and I'm offering something no one else offers. I'm the only one in the state. Mm. That That's good. I think that's good. It's unique. Very, very unique. Well, you know, we gonna talk about this because now I'm gonna have to work. I'm gonna have to work this hoagie angle, and and I, I got one with Doritos for you. Uh oh. <laughs> well, I wanted the Kosh one, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put this in your your creative juices. We can't do Kosh. Oh, it's everything in Chicago. Oh, well, my menu is named after places I lived, grew up, neighborhoods. Oh, yes. So, like for example, the Ford City Hoagie. Okay. That's the Ford City Mall. That's where we used to go to as kids. We would go to the movie. You know, kids go to the mall as kids. And then I have the Algale Gardens, Hoagie. I'm from Algale Gardens Housing Projects in Chicago. Got it. And then I have the Block 13 because I lived in Block 13. Okay. And then I have the 131st Street because Algale Housing Projects is on 131st in Michigan. I love this. So I wanted to be able to have a conversation with my customers without having a conversation if I'm busy. like when Because, you know, everybody want to know where you're from, where you grew up. And it's like my menu tells you right there. I'm from the Roseland area, 131st Street in Michigan, Algale Housing Projects. And yes, baby, greatness comes out of the projects. Don't don't believe social media. We do great things out there. Facts. Yes. Okay. No. Hey, look, I, <laughs> I rescind my ask because that was thorough. I appreciate that. Yes. I wanted to break some of the stereotypes. Yes. You know, I am from the south side of Chicago. I am from the housing projects. Society say it's a bad place and it was rough, but I didn't see that growing up. 
I saw a community that looked out for each other, built friendships. I am still friends with almost everybody I grew up. My best friend and I've been friends since kindergarten. Like, not like, oh, I ain't talked to you in a month. No, we we are friends. And it's a group of us like that. We went from kindergarten all the way up to like high school together and we still talk. So for me, the projects created strong friendships, created a foundation. It made me who I am. I am tough. I am her extremely good critical thinker. I can survive anywhere. That's what the projects does. It teaches you how to survive. And you're a good thinker. You pay attention to detail. And everybody looked out for you. I can be on the other side of the projects and it's getting dark and I'm flying like a track star home and you will hear people like, hey, ain't you Floor May granddaughter? You supposed to be out here? <laughs> like, everybody knew who you was and where you were supposed to be. We don't have that anymore. Would I ever, if I had the opportunity to change where I'm from, would I want to? No, no. I love my experience. I love the friendships. I love the family. I love the neighborhood cookouts. If Miss Butch was frying chicken, everybody in the block ate. You know, everybody came together. We had block parties and, you know, you had the the ones that went fishing and they would sit on the porch and clean the fish and have a huge fish fry. And the neighborhood ate together. And I hate that they don't talk about that part or show that part. They just show, oh, it was a shooting in this neighborhood. But what about Mrs. Hill that fed the neighborhood yesterday and there was no shootings and we were all hanging out? What about those stories? They don't they don't talk about that. What about the what 80, 90 percent of us that graduate high school and go on to college and finish in the top of our classes or start businesses and we're successful with those? What about the ones of us who don't have children out of wedlock and didn't get caught up in teen pregnancy or drugs. So I hate that people focus on the bad in the projects. So that's why it was so important when I created my menu. I'm like, look, I'm going to show you that this project girl is none of those stereotypes. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you. You are very, very welcome. All right. I got one more question I'm going to ask here before we jump into our first segment. And that is, if you weren't doing what you do professionally right now, what would you like to be doing? Um, I, A group home. And let me tell you why a group home, but it would be for teenagers. So a lot of people do not know that I grew up in a home where both of my parents were drug addicts. And uh, at some point in our life, my brothers and I got put into foster care. And you hear all these horrible stories about foster care and things that happen. I didn't experience that. I actually went into a really nice group home. It was like myself and I think like nine or 10 other girls. But our staff was amazing. They were amazing. They were helpful. And um, it changed. It changed me a lot because I when I went I was nervous. I was afraid. I just knew something was going to happen to me. And all I saw was the staff that wanted to help us and make sure we were okay. And I always wanted to do that because there are a lot of children in foster care because the parents made bad decisions. And I believe their decisions are based on their surroundings. And to be able to give back like that, 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 that's all, that means a lot because you don't know how a person's life will change if you were not there for them at their weakest moment. So, yeah, I would definitely be doing um group home for teenage girls and boys. That's always been my passion to be able to give back, especially to the foster kids. Okay. I like that. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's, that's awesome. And I feel that. I feel that 100%. Actually, I, I just, I'm feeling everything you're putting down. And look, we ain't even jumped in the first segment. We just in the intro. <laughs> Hey, that's a good intro. It's a fire intro. Well, let's get to it. All right. First segment is called What in the World is Going On With? This is where you start with the phrase, what in the world? And then you tell us what's on your mind. So, Lona, what's on your mind? Life. Life is on my mind growing and um, being a better person. I'm just always, always all over the place, but good all over the place. Always trying to make a difference somehow, 
even if it's in my business, my family, the community, pulling us together. So that's what I'm working on now with a uh, shy. Who's shy? You know shy, fat mama. Oh. You don't know about government. I do know her government name, but you know, when you don't call somebody their government name, then you don't think about their government name. Big shout out to Fat Mama. So yeah, I'm trying to put together something that makes us, how can I put it? Pull us more together to black business owners. Let us be resources for each other. So that's what's going on with me right now because we have struggles. A lot of us are first generation business owners. We make a lot of mistakes because we're learning. Mm -hmm. And if we can create something where we can bounce ideas off of each other or talk about other resources or help each other not run into certain roadblocks. Because I might have some information and you don't know that I have that information. Absolutely. So that's what's going on with me now. I'm big on that. Like the sharing of that information. I can't stress how important that is. And like, if we can just help somebody because those, those barriers and those, those, those things you run into, those setbacks sometimes can be more detrimental than they ever needed to be. Yes. And maybe they just didn't need to happen. Or sometimes when you have, it doesn't have to be the big thing that knocks you out. It could just be a series of small ones back to back to back to back. Yes. And I, I, I've had a series of small things back to back to back. And it, I would say now that I've went through those things and I look back at what happened, I would say I would need to do a little bit more research on people that you choose that I chose to be in certain positions like accountants and things like that. Because just because a person has credentials and good ratings does not always mean they have your best interests at heart. Right. <laughs> Some people are just deceitful. So say if we had this this committee, this community, and someone had a good experience, say, with an accountant, they could have referred that one to me versus, say, me going out searching and finding one on my own and going through this experience. And their good one, I probably would never had that experience. Right. So, yes, it is very much needed. I always tell people, we might not ever be able to do generational wealth. But, hey, can we at least try to do at least a little bit of Black Wall Street? There's enough of us here. Like, we ain't got to be rich, but let, let's be rich in love and helping each other and building. Like, God, that is, that's so amazing, right? You know, you sound like, who? you sound like Mike Banks. Do I? Yes. He be tall. He talks like that all the time. Big shout out to Mike. We we need to do that. And and my other thing is, man, let's not step on each other. Like if you know I got a hoagie shop, girl, don't try to open up next to me a hoagie shop. <laughs> if you want to do a hoagie shop, how about you open up one in Green Bay? Let's not fight over crumbs. You know? Yeah. Let's spread it. Because now I can help you. And show you how I had mine, girl. You can share some ideas with me. That's that's the one thing I do dislike. I hate that we step on each other when we're supposed to be, you know, building each other up. Because whatever God has written for you, baby, I cannot stop that. I can't. And I think that's where we don't understand. We always feel like somebody's going to get something that we were supposed to get. If it wasn't written for you, baby, you ain't getting it. Hmm. X. Bruh. Okay. I'm ready to jump in. I'm ready. Okay. My what in the world is going on with what in the world is going on with these people doing the polar plunge? Bruh. Mm, let me tell you something. So I was out there yesterday and I just want to give give the biggest shout out there to the Special Olympics uh who sponsors this uh this particular event. Now and in before college listeners, before you listen to me and think I'm being critical, know this. I have done the polar plunge myself. So <laughs> <laughs> I am one of those crazy people. But it is different when you are out there. So they had asked me to emcee the event. 
So I got an opportunity to MC the event. My boss came out there. He emceed the event with me. I got to MC the event with my best friend, Tarman. It was a great time. And these people, but let me tell you, people think the roughest part about the polar plunge is getting in the water. It ain't that. You know what the roughest part is? It's before you get in the water because you're standing in line with whatever you got on to jump into the water. So you're not standing with much, right? Or maybe you are, but then you really going to get cold because everything you're wearing is going to get soaked in when you jump in. So I'm just like, and I forgot about that part. So, I mean, yesterday when I'm watching people stand in line, there's people standing barefoot on the concrete. It's freezing, you know, and they're standing there and wait, you got to wait your turn and you're waiting for some time. So like, it's not like you in line and you just go jump in. No, you're in a long line and we got to talk to each individual team of individuals before you jump in, right? So I'm watching all the people in line and these people, they now there's some people out there, they're veterans. They done jumped. You ask them, how many jumps have you done? I didn't, I didn't jump the last 10 years. I didn't now they different. They different. And then yesterday's polar plunge was really different because there's no ice. Right. So normally you walk out on the pier and there's ice. And so then you're jumping from the pier into the water. Well, in this case, there was really no ice. You had to run into the water. That's different. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was rough. So, right. So, A, because when you now when you jump in the water, my experience, that water hits you and it hits you. It's almost like getting punched in the chest. Because it's just like cold, poof, <laughs> and then your chest explode, and then you're un, uh, unoriented. But you are going from there, and then you, once you orient yourself, you're headed out, right? In this case, they had to run in, get to a point, and then get out. That's a lot more cold than just jumping in. Oh, let me tell you something. I don't Bruh. think I could have did that. Oh, I thought that everybody just jumped in together like a team. Well, they that's what it used. When I did it, that's what it was. We jumped in as a team, but because of the lack of ice and the way the thing was, this year you had to run in. And that there, to me, when I think about it, that's different. So first of all, you stand in there, wait, and, and I'm, you, I'm watching you. You know, and they, when you're out there, you might not have no shirt on, you know, even this, that, and another. And then we go, we get you lined up, and then you go, and then you got to go in, get to a point, and then come back. That's a lot of work. I would have got out of line. You got out? You I would have got, got out of line. Don't get out of line. <laughs> Bruh. That's not how this works. This is for a good cause. I would have had to do my different, like, you know what? How about I just feed y'all? Because... <laughs> <laughs> you gonna you gonna bribe your way out with food? What, hey, food brings people. Yeah, like you, nobody turns down food. Facts. I mm -mm. I, I applaud you because I I wouldn't do that. Well, I applaud them because I didn't do it yesterday. My job was the MC, and I had a great time. I do want to give a very special shout out to all the people that plunged and all the money they raised on behalf of Special Olympics. It was a beautiful, beautiful sight that we saw yesterday. So we appreciate y'all. But I just want you to know that I observed what I observed, and it was interesting. But you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, Kosh listeners, if y'all really want to be about that life, next year I'm in. So if y'all want to raise some money, and do this. We can do this. I'm the, the, we'll be the Kosh team. Mona, you in? No. <laughs> I ain't even finna hype you up like, yes, I'm in. I will come out there and be a cheerleader alongside your wife like, you got this. Oh, no. But I ain't you, jumping in with you. Wait, wait. You just gone to make the food. All right, we, we, we got a commitment. <laughs> I, I make the food. I had a hot chocolate or hot coffee waiting for you when you get out that water. Like, here you go. Here's your hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I'm not jumping in. I love it. That's real. All right. Next segment. Next segment is called 21 Questions. And this is where we ask you a series of questions. There aren't 21 questions, but these questions might cause 21 answers because they are good in depth questions. They're going to help us get to know you a little better. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. 
What are you grateful for? I am grateful for for life. And uh, people who know me know what that means, but people who don't know me doesn't know what that means. And for those who don't know me, I will explain to you why I'm grateful for life. I'm a domestic abuse survivor and I almost died, got killed at the hands of my ex-husband. And the fact that God saved my life every day I wake up, I am so grateful for life because I know that there is a man or a woman who is going through or went through something similar that I went through and they didn't wake up. They, they didn't survive. Their abuser killed them. So I'm always grateful for life. Mm. What motivates you? Failure. Not wanting to fail keeps me motivated and life motivates me. What grounds you? God, that has that. That's just it. God grounds me. What does success look like to you? Success look like to me is um the people I'm serving being happy. That's success. Creating those friendships, those bonds, being a listening ear. Yes, we need money, but you can have all the money and still not be successful, especially if your heart isn't good. So yeah, success to me is other people's happiness. What irritates you? Lazy people. <laughs> <laughs> I hate people who, oh, I'm going to do this. I want to do this. And they just never get it started and they're lazy. I don't like lazy people and I don't like people that waste time. Why are you wasting your time? God woke you up. He gave you this day. Utilize your time. I I just don't like lazy people. Mm. What scares you? Failure. (laughs) I'm so afraid of failure. I work so hard because I don't want to fail. So, yeah, that that scares me. And getting married again. That's a fear, too. Uh Oh, I might pick the wrong person again. So, yeah, that's another fear. That just means you got to go through a longer interview process. Right. Well, with that last one, I mean, we were together on and off since we were 11 years old. Like, <laughs> Oh, okay. That was a long interview process. Right? So, yeah, I figure when uh, God feels I'm ready, he'll send me who I supposed to be with. Yeah. Okay. What recharges your soul? My business recharges my soul. Every day that I get up and can run my business, It recharges me. Every time a customer walks through that door and leave happy, it recharges me. How do you define love? For me, I would say someone that caters to you. And what I mean by that is someone who pays attention, even like with family, someone who supports your dreams, not just spouse, but friends and family, someone who listens and not push. Someone who understands, someone who is patient, meaning spouse and family, because you have some family members that are like, mm. so that's, that's love for me. If you are that type of person, you are patient, you're kind, you're understanding, you're supportive, you're not negative, that's love. Last one. What is the most memorable life lesson you learned from a parent, a guardian, mentor? I would say my mom. And the biggest lesson that I learned from my mother is no matter how many times you get knocked down or you fail at something, keep trying it. Just go a different path. And what, what, what that, where I'm going with that is my mom struggled with drugs for a lot of years and she had been to rehab so many times, but she always went. And maybe she didn't stay clean long. But then she always went back. And then she got to a point where she had been clean for 17 years. So it's that that's like a big lesson. Like just keep getting back up. Just keep getting back up. If God gives you life and you can get back up, that's okay. Got knocked down. Dust yourself off. Grieve for however long you need to grieve. Put your big girl pants back on. Do it again. Mm. Thank you.
You're welcome. All right. Next segment. Next segment is called word association. This is where I say a word and you tell me what's on your <laughs> mind. Oh, okay. You ready for this? Oh my God. We'll never see what these words go be. Oh yeah. Well, these good words, the look, good words. And you know what? I'm going to tell you how good this word is. We always start off with the same word. Every episode is the word that unifies us all. It's the word that bonds us all. And that word is food. Ooh. Chicago House of Hoagies. <laughs> <laughs> <Bruh. laughs> but now on a serious note, family. Food and family goes together. Mm. Okay. Outside. Apart from your business, do you got a favorite food joint around here? My favorite food place, believe it or not, and it's not because we're friends, is Fat Mama's Po Boys in Oshkosh. I love her food. Oh, my God. Her greens. And she be playing games. I be like, girl, you ain't make the greens today. Mm. She makes really good collard greens and her mac and cheese. Yeah. She don't be playing. Yeah, her food is is good. I love her greens. The first time I had her greens, I said, girl, these greens taste like my grandmama greens. And my grandmother's been passed away for a few years and fat mama food just her. Yeah, the collard greens is amazing. Brings you back. It does. You know what? I need to I need to go on and stop in there. I ain't seen her in a minute. Yes, you do. Okay. Cocktail or beer? Wine. So cocktail. Wine. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's our favorite? Oh my God. I love um the sweet red from Cooper's Hawk. But the closest one is down in Milwaukee. You would think they would put one in Green Bay since the Packers is all famous because it's a bougie winery. <laughs> 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 but it's so good. Their wine is so good. And they got good food. Mm. The food is really, really good. Okay. Shop local. Yes. I'm all about shopping local. If I can find whatever I need at a mom and pop, I'm there. I think that's so important. And no offense to my Walmart shoppers. Like I try to avoid like the Walmarts and the Targets. I literally try to go to mom and pops. That's a community. Right. You got a favorite one? Right now I'm doing Angie's Designs. Um, she's next door to me and she makes her candles. Oh my God. They're amazing. Yeah. Cause I'm a candle person. You know, no. candles and wine go together. So you <laughs> like them candles. You got that wine going. <laughs> I, you're what well, you're a vibe person. Yes. I'm, um, I, I am. I think candles and wine said vibe. And then I make your thing. You like the charcuterie board. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm big on the charcuterie boards. I, my wife has spoiled me with these things cause they, she's elaborate with it. Out of nowhere, like usually, I'm not even kidding. When we finish an episode, usually she's in the kitchen and there's a charcuterie board being made right then. Like she's, and I'd be like, okay. And I smile. They just blew up. I do ladies' night at my house. I try to do it once a month because work all the time. You got to have that, that day to yourself. Right. And now my friends are like, you're doing a charcuterie board? I said, you know, I'm all about theme. I'm going to have a one to go with whatever I'm cooking. Oh, oh so you do theme charcuterie board. I do theme. Yes. Right. Okay. What's the favorite thing to put on a charcuterie board? Because there'd be a lot going on on them. So my favorite thing is I like to do white cheddar cheese with this. This I don't know what it's called, but it's honey and peanuts, all different type of nuts in a jar. You find it at um like the Mediterranean grocery store. Oh, my God. And you put that on the cheese or you put it on your fruit. And you drink the wine with it. Oh, it's so good. Mm. I wish I knew the name of it. I might have to uh, find it on Amazon and send it to you. Okay, you you do that, and I will uh we'll put it in the comment. <laughs> okay, put it in the comment. Concert. <sighs> the last concert I went to actually was a comedy show. I went to see D. Ray, Little Duval. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. It was a bunch of them down in Chicago like two years ago. It was lit. And you know, it was like red carpet fashion show. Mm. Everybody came out dressed. So yeah. I had to, took me like two months to put my outfit together. Cause you know, 
Chicago people are very critical. Like, oh, they don't mm. they don't play. Like she wore that. <laughs> she got that on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it in your face. I mean, I love the honesty. I'm like, so you ain't put no spanks on with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's rough so yeah that was my last uh like concert type thing i went to i went to the um uh, to the comedy show at mccormick place i don't think people know when there's a black event like we 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 go go oh yes you must have a fit yes one of my friends when we had went out and uh, she came to my house because you know when the ladies get together we always choose somebody house to get like together and we're all getting dressed and everything and she's like i thought we were just going out and we're like we are and she's like but you guys are so dressed and i said you've never been out with black girls before <laughs> <laughs> i was like girl we we gotta change you're not wearing that with us you are not wearing it i was like we gotta do something else with your hair she was like, my friends and I just go out like this. I said, mm-mm, boo, we your new friends. You can't hang with us like that. No, no, no. I say, we're going to wear the shoes that hurt our feet, but that's okay because we got a purse and we got our flip-flops in there because we can slide them on. I said, you have to know these are 25-minute shoes, which means 25 minutes my feet is hurting. And she was like, y'all got this down to a science. I was like, yes, we do. After <laughs> now, now that one you just put me on game twenty five minute shoes because you know you'll walk around the shoes in the house and you'll be like, I can get twenty five minutes out of these, I could get an hour out of these. Oh, mm, I could just walk to the car in these. <laughs> 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 and you had them backup shoes, them flip flops that you slide in, but you always want to make sure at bare minimum you walk into the event. With your shoes on because everybody gonna look at your shoes like look at them shoes once you in the event don't matter because everybody's supposed to see the shoes don't seen them now you got your flip-flops on and that means they already know that she had on some lit shoes she got on them flip-flops <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you a question what do you do with the shoes then you throw them in your purse oh so you taking a purse big enough for the shoes yes or if you don't have one big enough we carry them you sit them at your table and i'm gonna steal your shoes Mm -mm. That ain't happening. Let me tell you something. Them flip flops came in handy when I went to that concert because that park in that McCormick place, baby, we had to walk like six, seven blocks underground to get to the event. I was like, y'all ain't got no no carts, no golf carts, no old people push me thing. I was like, oh my God. So yes, you would carry them shoes. When I tell you some of the women had took their shoes off in that underground garage because they didn't prepare properly. I had my flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. I done learnt today. That's what I, I done learnt today. But me and y'all don't have to go through that. Wait a minute. That's not true. Our no. feet don't hurt. Wait, our feet do hurt. If you wear if you got them hard, look, hard bottom shoes ain't no joke. Now they ain't I don't think they nearly what y'all shoes are because there's a lot be going on there. But you know, you know how they back in the day they had the square toe shoes or the show the point toe shoes, like all of that ain't always working out well. <laughs> you know, and make make no mistake about that. That means for all the men listening, you better get you some Snoop Dogs, them little uh house shoe well, shoes that they sell at the beauty supply store. Hey your girl put them in her purse. Well, no, now you can get a dress shoe with a tennis shoe bottom. That changed the game. Oh, okay. You know, because you, you can get a nice little shoe on top, but the soles are like a tennis shoe sole. And then that actually usually feels okay. That's not too bad. Oh, that's good. See, I didn't got, but see, I didn't, I didn't just crept it all the way down. It, I only wear dress shoes when I got a full suit on. Now, I'll put Timberland boots on everything. Because uh, to me, my my business suit is a pair of jeans, a sports coat, a bow tie, Timberland boots. We go. Let's go. That that, that looks nice because you got that whole casual business thing going on. Well, this is just kind of what this is my trademark. And comfort. Comfort is everything. Because you know what? It is hard to carry on a quality conversation if you are uncomfortable. 
Oh yes, you're like mm, my feet hurt. I wish you would stop talking so we can go. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what's happening. That is what I mean. You are too busy thinking about how uncomfortable you are than you are the conversation that you are having. That part, yep, that's no. so true. Okay, streaming, like video streaming. It's your word. Uh, I would say Facebook. Oh, so. I hardly ever do like Facebook live. So now I got to do that now. I guess that'll be like streaming. So I'm getting. Why are you feeling some kind of way about that? I don't know. Cause it's like, oh, now you got to go live and you got to talk to the people like, Hey, what if I'm having a bad hair wrap day? And I want to be alive. That happens. Yes. Now look, I didn't see you. Multiple times, many in many places, and I've seen multiple pictures. You don't have bad hair wrap day. Why? Thank you. You you always you know it's always prepared. Yes, but yeah, getting used to that 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 streaming and all of that. Yeah. Okay. Anything in particular you are streaming right now? Uh, the, oh, not really. I don't know if this counts as a TikTok video count. Well, if you watch so, it, it streams. Yep. I created two TikToks where all of the small, all the black small business owners for Black History Month, and I posted them on my Facebook page. You can view them at Chicago House of Hoagies. And I like created like little things like what they own and where it was located at. I thought it was pretty cool. Like, I think people forget that supporting isn't always money. Yes. Little things like that. So, yeah, I guess I'm streaming that. Okay. That counts. Entrepreneurship. It's like a like a diet that you're trying to stick to. <laughs> I guess. Bruh. That's the first time I've ever heard that association. Because like, you know what a diet, you got a love-hate relationship with it. You love it, but you hate it because you can't eat that Snickers bar that you want to eat. So entrepreneurship takes courage. Yes. And you cannot have doubt in yourself. You have to remember to be your biggest cheerleader. You have to remember that everybody is not going to like your product and that's okay. Don't let it kill your spirit. You have to remember that no one is going to see your vision or project your vision better than you. And the other people's opinions doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You know, people be like, oh, you should use this type of bread because I think it's better. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, you heard it. You got it. Thank you. Don't get mad because it's your business, but you got to be, you got to be so strong and dedicated and you got to work it, man. You, I look at it this way. If you're going to go put 40 hours in for somebody else, that if you call in one time or your parent gets sick and you say, Hey, I got to do this. They're like, Oh, you got a point. Now you got two points. You fired. You don't put all this work in, baby, do it for yourself. Put that work in for you. I'm not saying that you probably won't still have to work a job because you got to have multiple streams of income as an entrepreneurship because your business is a roller coaster. You have seasons. And in the winter months, if it's cold in Wisconsin, ain't nobody coming out the house to eat. We get lazy when it gets cold outside. If it's nice, boom, you're bond more. So you got to have something for those slow t- for that slow time. You got to have stuff for when you notice the season where families are traveling and they're doing family stuff. They're in the deals. They're on cruises. Okay, now you got to prepare. Like all the parents are going, dropping off their kids at college. So your business isn't as big. You have to always be thinking of different ways to reinvent your business. Always got to reinvent. Because people people don't always like to watch reruns. Ooh, that's a nugget. Bruh. <laughs> that there. That's true. Is a nugget. Okay. All right. You know what? We learning today on the couch. <laughs> look, look, Lona, you putting on a full workshop, a full lesson of things. Yes. And that one, one other thing I want to touch on is learn business credit. I was fortunate to, um, I'm a research bug. And a lot of people don't learn business credit. Learn business credit so you don't burn up your personal credit. And if you don't know how to do it, reach out to somebody that does. Most people that know business credit will help you. I'm hoping for free. (laughs) I will. (laughs) 
But yes, learn business credit is very important. Okay. Last word. Diversity. Ooh, my customers are very diverse. I love that my business touches on that. It brings all walks of life together. You can walk in there on any given day and you will see all these conversations going on together. Probably people who have never would have crossed path or even ever had a conversation with each other. Oh my God, that's amazing. That is so amazing to see that. And like sitting down playing dominoes, like, like, you know how to play dominoes? All these different walks of life coming together over food. My thing is the one thing that connects us in this world is food. If you can feed them, you can have a conversation with them. If you can have a conversation with them, you can change their heart. Mm. Facts. Yes. Okay. Next segment. The next segment is called the Kosh Hidden Gems. And what the Kosh Hidden Gems is, is it's the opportunity for our guests to share a hidden gem. Now, a hidden gem, they ain't got to be hidden. A hidden gem could be something everybody knows about, but maybe they don't know this particular detail about it. Or maybe it's something you don't think everybody knows about. Or maybe it's just your favorite thing in the region. What do you got for us? I would have to say my hidden gem would be Chicago House of Hoagies. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm a hidden gem because every day I get new customers coming in. Like, I didn't know you were here. Mm. I didn't know you was here. I'm like, I've been here a year. July made a year. I still feel like I am that hidden gem that people still do not know about. And it's like once they discover me, I love they bring back their friends, their coworkers. And then they all come in like, when did you get here? This this mall, what, what happened to the laundromat? Baby, I'm in the laundromat spot. <laughs> I, I'm it. So, yes, I'm definitely still a hidden gem. I'm hopeful that it'll change where people start discovering me. But sometimes I like it because it's like they looked for you. Yes. A lot of people only eat at little small mom and pop hidden gem places. And that's nice. That means you're doing something great that you're standing out as that hidden gem. I like it, though. What's the favorite? What's the favorite sandwich? What's the favorite hoagie people like? Oh, the number one, the Chicago hoagie. You know, I had to have a Chicago hoagie being from Chicago. It's made with turkey, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, hot jar nero, mild banana peppers, salt, pepper, mayo, pepper jack and provolone cheese, and a hoagie sauce. And that hoagie roll is grilled in butter. You can get it grilled in regular butter or garlic butter. That is the most popular. And oh, yeah. it is so messy. Like, lick your elbows, messy. Like, let me go home and take off my clothes and eat this. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to get comfortable. You want to be in your comfortable clothes when you eat a hoagie. Like, these kids better not say nothing to me right now. I'm in hoagie mode right now. It, it just does that to you. Even, um, like, I'll make me a hoagie at work. And I'll be like, oh, Lord. Give me just 10 minutes to myself <laughs> so I can eat at least half of it because you're in a whole nother zone. Oh, yeah. Well, because you, you, I feel like when you have a hoagie, and I haven't seen your hoagies, you got to have a plan of attack. Yes. Like, you can't just go in there. Like, you you just don't go rushing in. Like, you need a plan of attack or else you write what you came in with might not can leave with. <laughs> yes. Because there's, there's a lot happening there. It's huge. Yes, I definitely wanted to make sure you got flavor. I'm all about flavor. I like to eat. Anybody that knows me, hangs out with me, like, Lona, I am that person that goes to a restaurant and I order multiple things off the menu. Oh, I do that. I'm like, you know, give me one of those. Give me that. Give me, like, those two appetizers. I'm going to try that, too. Because how do you know what you like if you eat your food the same everywhere you go? Yes. You you don't know what you like. So I, I'm big on that. Even like with, with, when the boys were little, I would never let them tell me they didn't like something if I knew for a fact they never had it. Like, you can't tell me you don't like that. How about you try that? And if you don't like it after you've tried it, we'll try it one more time at a different time. And if you still don't like it, guess what? You don't have to eat it. Because I, and this is just me, I feel like when you start saying you don't like things and you're afraid to try food, that trickles down as you become an adult. 
Now you have that type of fear of trying things. You're going to be afraid to try to go after that promotion that you think you deserve. But you already set your got this fear in your spirit with food. And you're not you're not understanding that that's affecting you on other parts of your life. When you're an open minded person and you're open and willing to try things, you are the go getter. You're going to go for that promotion you feel like you need. You're going to go after that job that you think like, oh, I might not get it. But you know what? I'm going to go for it. So I'm all about try it. You might not like tomatoes on one sandwich, but you might like tomatoes on something different. Because mm. I'm like that. Like, I love onions, but I don't like onions on certain things. Facts. Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you, it, this right here is a master class. You put nuggets out. I'm putting nuggets out. This whole episode is nuggets. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, at this time, we are going to take a small commercial break. Did you know there are children in the Fox Valley in need of hearing aids, but their parents struggle to provide them because of lack of insurance or high copays? I am Juliette Sturkins, audiologist and board member of Here in the Fox Cities, and proud that this small local nonprofit organization has helped fund hearing aids for some 30 kids. Your donation would help more children here. Visit hereinthefoxcities.org to learn more and to see their smiles. Every child deserves to hear. All right, we are back. And you know what? I didn't drop the ball. Let me just take a quick moment to say that this episode of The Kosh is sponsored by Sturgeon Spirits Craft Distillery, the Kosh's newest tradition. And let me tell you, y'all already know that that place is my church. That's where I go. And they had a special going on the other day for Sturgeon Spearing. And that was, you could pick up two bottles and get a third bottle free. And if you don't think I didn't do that, yes, I did. Yes, I did. So now... I'm going to go try to make some really creative craft cocktails of my own here in the Smith household. If you haven't been to Sturgeon Spirits yet, you need to go down there and check out that team, Todd, Tanya, and Carl, making these amazing craft cocktails. They are fantastic. All right. And, it's, and since it's Sturgeon Spirits uh, season right this moment, even though when this episode comes out, it will have passed. Now is the time that you should stop down and check them out. They had some cool stuff going on. They had an ice sculpture. You ever see those ice sculptures that they have and you pour the shot down and then it goes down the ice sculpture? One of those. They had one of those. Oh, wow. I'm about that life. <laughs> I'm 100% about that life. Okay. We are on to my favorite segment of the cash and um I'm, i keep saying this so i'm gonna have to do it eventually and that is this segment is warrant is worthy of some music so i'm gonna have to give me a little intro music for this but it is time for story time and this is where our guest shares a story with the cash listeners about whatever they want to share a story about so lona what's your story about my story is going to be about so i know earlier we touched on my business starting from a Facebook post, but we didn't go into detail. So my story is, after I made this post, people were reaching out to me actually that day because they thought I was at the hoagie shop up in Roseland, but I wasn't. And I told them, hey, I made this in my house. And they started asking me, can I make them one? And I was like, no. But people kept asking. And I asked myself, is this a thing? So fast forward a few weeks, I put a post on Facebook. And I said, hey, I'm going to be making hoagies and I'm inviting 30 people to my house. But this is the thing. You have to be from Chicago or Philadelphia because you're going to be able to critique me. Oh, and, um, they came. They critiqued. They gave their opinions. They told me what they liked, what they didn't like. If it made them feel like home, what was missing. They let me know if they would shop with me. Would they eat this? And, um, I think it was the best research I've ever done. And I think we we forget to do that before we start a business. You have to reach out to the people that you are going to serve to get their feedback. So yeah, that's my story. I it it, it was nice having all those different personalities and and stuff. So I gotta back you up. 
Okay, because we I feel like we jumped right in, but there's a part that I need to know before. So were you making hoagies and posted them on Facebook or on social media? Is that what was happening? I, I, well, I cook. You know, I cook. So every time I make food, I post it on Facebook. And this one particular day, I had made hoagies and I posted them on Facebook. Mm. And people saw them and they're like, oh, can you bring me a ho? Can you bring me a number something from Mr. Hoagies? And I'm like, girl, I made this in my kitchen. Mm. And yeah, so it, it turned out to be a thing. And, and inviting those people to my home to critique was like the best thing. Okay. So then how did that transform into House, House of, Chicago House of Hoagies? How did that, what's the transition look like? I got my first catering order doing that tasting. I was like, wait, I don't know pricing. I don't know how much stuff costs. And he was like, oh, I'm having my kids is having a birthday party. I'm like, I don't even know what to charge you. So here I am like, okay, I'm going to do it. But I'm going on other websites, restaurant websites to see what they charge. And I'm like, okay, this is what I charge because this is what they charging. And um, yeah, it just took off. And I started doing farmer's market and catering, different events. And I was still working at the time. And I was like, is is this a thing? Should I be doing this like full time? Like, do I need to make this a business? And yeah, I stepped out on faith and made it a business. And it's been working out. Well, I know people be going. Yes. And I know you got loyal followers. Yes. And they travel for you. Yes, they do. Because they ain't from Manasha. No, I have some from Manasha. Well, I ain't saying Manasha don't go. I'm just saying the people I know. Oh, yeah. They traveling. Oh, yeah. Mom, you got Milwaukee people. I got some people from Madison. I got some from Upper Michigan. I'm like, girl, you saw my post in Michigan? Thank you. Well, I just mean locally. Like, because here, yeah. here's the thing. You know, if, you, if you've been in the region long enough and you have been, you know, people talk about the drive from Oshkosh to Appleton as if it's like. They talk about the drive from Appleton to Menasha. <laughs> Customers be like, so when are you going to put one in Bruh. Appleton? And because, you know, I, we live in Appleton over by um, Myers. I'm like, that's a five minute drive. Like you act like you had to try it 20 minutes. But yes, people, we are the generation of convenience. People want it at their doorstep. They want it right there. They don't want to have to drive. So, yeah, And that's what I mean. So I know people from the cash here that go there, people in Appleton that go there. And then, you know, you throw in all the other communities, Fox Crossings, you know, your your Amros, people go. Oh, yes. They, they definitely do, especially the Village of Fox Crossing Police Department. They are probably um, some of my biggest fan customers. They come in a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And a friend that Mike Banks and I share, he's a retired, uh, I think, police sergeant. And we were talking one day, and he was like, Lona, if you got them coming in there eating with you, they trust you. They love you. He said, that's an honor. He, he said, I was, he was on the force for a lot of years. And he was like, we don't eat just anywhere. Facts. I was like, really? That's a thing? Oh, no, that's a thing. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. All the things that you learn mm-hmm. where certain places, uh, certain people eat with you, it's, it's like an honor. Well, you know, you got to trust that. Yes. You know. Got to trust the spaces who you let serve you food. I guess. Yeah. But well, because we're not in that field, I think because I'm not in that field, I would have never thought about that because I'm not in that field. Right. I get that. I'll give you an example. So we went and saw a comedian last night. Right. Uh, this black comedian. And he was talking about if you ever want to see the difference between like white people and black people go to a potluck. <laughs> the raisins in a potato salad no he, he was just like he was just like you know there, there's questions he was like you know chad will come in there and look around and he's just like hey i want to grab some of this i'm gonna grab some of that and grab some of that and they were like when tyrone walk in there we ain't eat nothing that did, we couldn't open that came out of a bag we, like, we, we want to know who made it first like it can't be a random pot there of things like we want to know who is that because then you're going to do other analysis you're going to be like is that Betty? Betty who has all the cats? Yeah, we ain't eating that. Right. That time who I seen going to the bathroom and never wash his hands when he come out. 
And my thing, I don't eat from people who I've never been to your house. If I ain't never been to your house, oh, baby. Mm-mm. And if you got pets, like if you got cats, oh, no, no. They be jumping on everything. No, not, no. Mm-mm. You bring these potato chips in this bag that you got from Pick and Save, I'm going to eat them. <laughs> 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 bro, you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's how it be. You be at work and you see the black people all our place be full of everything that came from the store that we open. It be chips and cookies. That's it. And maybe the pizza that HR ordered from Domino's. That's mm. it. Don't be nothing. And if you one of your friends made something and you been in their house, it be what your friend made. That's it. Mm, that's it. They be like, you didn't try mom like. Mm-mm. No, boo. Look at your nails. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Bruh. Okay. Okay. Now, see. Once again, I'm gonna say this is a this is an episode of lessons. <laughs> gonna learn today. All right. Well, it's time. All right, it is time for the topic of the week. Topic of the week is chosen by our guest 99.9% of the time, and this week is no different. So, Lona, what is our I am the topic. Oh, (laughs) you the topic of the week? I am the topic. Me and C-H-O-H, Hoagie Love, Chicago House of Hoagies. What's going on? Always the topic. You know, remember to come out and shop with small business owners especially this month support the black business owners we, we're the topic we are the underdogs most of the time we fight the hardest we work the hardest i mean we do a lot and we're so, we're so humble so yes i would say i'm the topic okay let's talk about it then <laughs> what what don't we know you don't know that i volunteer my muslim sisters and i we cook for the shelters Oh, oh yeah. We we cook. We donate our time when we can. What else do we do? I'm always working with people of progression, helping them with food or whatever. Whatever I can do. And a lot, a lot of people don't know that Chicago House of Hoagies is also a safe haven. It's a is safe. It? It's a safe haven for kids, for anyone going through domestic abuse you can come there and i will get the right people in there to come and help you no questions asked i have a no questions asked policy at my restaurant if you come in there and you tell me you need help you're hungry baby i don't need to know your story because what people don't understand is when you need help or you're in pain the last thing you want to do is answer a thousand questions so i have a, a no questions policy let me get you some help a few months ago, I had a gentleman come in my restaurant who was suicidal. And um, he told me, and it just it just touched my heart. He said, I had nowhere else to go. But I remembered you were here. And I remember, uh, he said, I remember you was here. And he said, black women are always caring and kind. And this was a white guy. And I was like, what? He better not be trying to kill me. But he wasn't. But I just love the fact that he trusted me enough to come to me when he was in a really bad space. And I got him some help. And his wife came in a few weeks ago. I never met his wife. Only him because he would come in and get food. And she came in and she said, you don't know me. She said, but I want to say thank you. And I'm like, what are you thanking me for? She said, because you saved my husband's life. And I was like, oh, that was your husband. You're welcome. I said, girl, it's nothing. I said, we're supposed to help each other. We're supposed to get people where they need to be when they need help, when no questions asked. I didn't ask him any questions. I just made some phone calls and I sat with him and I let him talk. And some people don't understand that sitting with a person and listening is very powerful. Sometimes people just want to talk and they don't want to ask no questions. Just let them talk. So, yeah, that's a, that's something a lot of people don't know. I've had babies dropped off at my restaurant. Yes. Oh, babies. For real? Yes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, break that down. So a guy came in and the girlfriend got pulled over, I think for like a DUI or something. 
but he was at home. He's not the kid's dad, but they won't let him take the car because he didn't have a license. But they let him take the baby because they were going to send the baby to uh, have Child Protective Service come and get the baby. So he was walking and he saw the name Chicago and he came in there and he was like, is it okay if I leave my baby in here for a little while? I got to go get some stuff situated. And he told me his backstory. And I'm like, are you sure? He was like, yeah, you don't look like somebody's going to hurt the baby. You keep the baby. And he came back a little while later and he thanked me. And do you know that guy he comes in my restaurant at least once a month and shop with me? And still thanking me for keeping the baby. I was like, it's no problem. And I think we have to remember that the small business owner is not just business. We're family. We're going to make sure you're safe. We're going to do whatever we need to do to help you. You know, it's not because we want something in return or we're looking for a crown. It's because most of us are genuinely good people. Mm. Facts. Mm -hmm. That gave me goosebumps. Oh, yeah. I've had parents call and say, hey, can my kid come sit up in your restaurant? I'm running late from picking them up from school. Sure can. Do I have to buy something? No. I got a game section in here. They can play games. They can play chess. I got a whole book section. They can read books. Like, no, they're fine. I, I even feed the kids. Like, y'all want to eat? And she like, no, I'm like, no, you ain't got to pay me. I'll keep your kids. Child care is expensive. It's like hmm. college tuition. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can help out a, a parent with watching, having their child sit in the restaurant for a few hours, probably in between shifts or something like that, I would do that. I don't, it, how is it affecting me? You truly are the definition of that village. Yes, we need that. We do. That's why so much stuff is happening to our kids because we're forgetting to be a village. God, that's what I touched on earlier about living in the projects. We were a village. Like, we took care of each other. Mm. We don't do that anymore. And, and we're losing these babies because we're forgetting to protect them and be the village for them. Well, it sounds like you said the example. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard, too. I'm I, I'm trying. Now you doing? I thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I got another question. So uh, you know, I've been in the establishment. I've been there. I've been there at least, I think, three times is what I'm gonna say. I got your picture on my page. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But it, it's is it your family that's there working with you? Yes, my my aunt helps out from time to time. My brother, my nieces, and my nephews. They come and help. So it's family. Everybody comes in and pitch in what they can. Because, you know, I am, I'm first-generation business owner. It's seven kids. I'm the oldest. Mm. So, you know, it's a lot of pressure on that firstborn child. Yes. Whew, that. Well, you said you leading the way. Sometimes I'm like, God, can you reverse this and make me the second born? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other set of issues. <laughs> But yes, I'm I'm firstborn, and um, it's nice when your brother comes sit next to you. He be like, "Sis, I'm so proud of you. You doing it? Now you're making me want to do something." And uh, my brother Tony just started going to CDO school. He he works at Amazon. I think he's been out like seven years. And he's like, "I think I want to be owner operator. You've given me the courage to do that. Starting the business by yourself while going through a divorce and domestic abuse." He was like. If my sister can do that, she's strong. I know I can do it. I said, I love that when my siblings see something, see my see strength in me that I don't always see. And it gives them the courage to go after something that they want to do. Because we don't always see our own strength. No, not at all. We don't. Not we be doing stuff with people like, girl, you so strong. You be like, girl, I'm, mm, I don't see that. Well, because sometimes we... We may look strong on the outside, but we still have turmoil on the inside. We do. And people forget that. They they think, oh, she's strong. She got it. She's doing it. And they be like, oh, baby, sometimes I need to breathe. Sometimes all I had the strength to do was to show up. Yes. Yes. And even though I, I go on autopilot when I show up, that was real hard to show up. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to show up, but... Um... I still feel good about it. I feel, still feel good about my decision, about what I'm doing. You know, I feel amazing about it. 
what's something that you would want our listeners to understand that they couldn't understand from the outside? That just because it look easy is not easy. And uh, people tend to think that it's just easy and um, you don't have to work at it. It's not easy. But the things that you want most in life, most of the time, it's not easy. You got to work for it. Facts. And I'm putting in the work. Even if I cannot create generational wealth in my family, I want to create something that I can probably give to someone else. Child, even if it's a child in foster care or something. And uh, no offense to any other race, but I want to give it to like someone black, someone who was an underdog, maybe foster care or maybe criminal background, someone who didn't, someone didn't believe in. If we start creating things like that, just imagine what we can be. I think you're already giving something back all the time. And I believe that is inspiration. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot. That doesn't always happen. And, you know, we, uh, in this space, our region, the Northeast region, uh, the Fox Valley region, there's lots of spaces where you can find inspiration, but they don't always have our face. True. That is very, very true. And it's nice that we are, what is it, like 15 or 20, maybe 30 Black-owned business owners in the it's, it's, it, it, it's grown a lot, and most of it is centralized, centralized around... Um, I'm going to go, most of them are centralized around Appleton. They are. Like, uh, there, there's a culture there that it's possible. And it's not, it's not weird. You know what I mean? Like, in, in some of the other spaces, like, you might be the first. And even if you're not the first. I was the first. It's unfamiliar. But around there, there's they've been popping up for a minute. I do believe, like, we are in a place where... There's enough black businesses around Appleton that other black entrepreneur hopefuls say, oh, I know it's possible. And I know people will support it. People will show up for me. I wanted to be in Appleton so bad. I couldn't find a location. Mm, Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I couldn't find a location. And if I did find a location, it just required so much work. And I'm just like, yeah, this isn't going to work. No, I think, but... You know what's cool about where you at? I can't tell you how many people don't know if they really in Appleton or Menashe. <laughs> you, know you know I'm right. They do. They be like, is this Appleton? I'm like, mm-mm, Menashe, Village of Fox Cross. And they're like, really? Mm, okay. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> then it's, oh, this used to be the PDQ uh, strip mall. I'm like, yep, sure did. And when I first went in that location, I was like, oh, my God, this strip mall has been abandoned like 10 years, 10 plus years. And here I am <sighs> going to take this risk and go in a place that's been empty for a long time and being the first one over there. All the things like I'm checking too many boxes and I don't think I want to check. <laughs> well, you jumped all the way in. I did. And it's it's been working out. And especially now that they got the quick trip over there, mm. I'm getting them truck drivers. Oh, I bet. Yes. I bet that that, that your sign says, yes, come eat here. I be telling them when they come and they go on your little radio and do your little shout out to all your other truck drivers. Like, hey, hashtag or whatever you all say, truck driver language. <laughs> breaker, breaker. <laughs> right. <laughs> I found this little spot on my little route. So yes, that that that's helping a lot too. And then the fact that I have that huge parking lot, they can park over there because we have all that parking in the back. They they semis can fit right there. Oh, okay. So they got a spot they can actually pull in, come grab some, get the grub on. And, oh yeah. And... My last truck driver was from Mississippi. Mm. He was like, Oh, this this good. He's like, I've been a truck driver for a long time. I ain't never had nothing like this. Mm-mm. And he sat in there and he talked and he ate. I think he was just resting for a little while, but, and he wound up taking one to go with him. Mm. So yeah, this is, that's nice being off the highway, being next to quick trip, being next to the football stadium. Oh yeah. You got good things over there. Yes. And then all the foot traffic. I get the uh, community that 
I didn't have anywhere to walk to after the PDQ closed. Now they have somewhere to walk to. Right. Yeah. So it's nice. Okay. Any last words you want to say about your topic? Um, no, just don't be afraid. That's it. Go after it. Just just do it. Just do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. It's that time, Kosh listeners. All right. Kosh listeners, I just want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for giving us your minds and ears. Thank you for caring enough about an amazing person in our community out here making an impact, making things better for us. Apparently building this village and we should be supporting someone who is a village builder. So um, once again, you know, we are a work in progress. We always trying to get better here on the cash. Um, how can you help us get better? Well, I hope you want to help us get better, you know, because we are a community podcast. And so first of all, what I need you to do is, you know, send us an email. Let us know how we're doing. Tell us what we could change, how we can improve the show. Also, if you would like to be a guest or if you'd like to recommend a guest, you can reach us at askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, that is askthekosh at gmail.com. Um, I answer all the emails, I promise you. It is me. It is not somebody else. It is not AI. It is Timber himself (laughs) answering them emails. All right. And another thing, you know what? I think we have something pretty special going on here. Um, Now, we already have a really awesome following of listeners, uh, but... It's a community podcast and where there's where there's more community who haven't heard about the cash. Let's help them find out so they can learn more about our neighbors here who are out here doing amazing things in our region. And um, so how do we do that? It's called analytics. How do you improve your analytics? Well, I improve analytics every time one of y'all hit the subscribe button. So if you're listening to the cash right now, hit the subscribe button and then take a moment. And if you have the opportunity fill out a review that review and that subscribe helps us get in front of more eyes and ears. We think we have something really, really special here at the Kosh help us get in front of more of our neighbors, more of our community members, more of our village ears and eyes. All right. And I just want to take another quick moment and say, you know, this episode of the Kosh is sponsored by, Sturgeon Spirits Craft Distillery, uh, the Kosh's newest tradition and Timber's favorite church. Most definitely. (laughs) Okay, now we are on to the real business at hand. It is shout out time. Loni, you got some shout outs? Sure, I always have shout outs. I would like to first give a shout out to the Banks. People don't know who that is. That's Tasha and Mike Banks. They definitely helped me doing this journey. I would also like to give a shout out to Shy Fat Mama, because that's my village. You know, you have to uh, have your village. I would also like to give a shout out to Renata over at Intrigue Fashion in Appleton. She was also a really good uh, support system when I was starting to get into this business. She was actually one of the people at my tasting because she's from the south side of Chicago as well. And I want to give a shout out to the Kosh for having me here. Hey. <laughs> this is amazing. I appreciate it. I um I love what uh Timber's doing. It is much needed. Um, it's amazing. So thank you. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. My shout outs. I want to just give a quick shout out. And I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I want to make sure that I send another special shout out to Special Olympics and the Polar Plunge. Uh thank you for asking me to host it. It meant a lot. Like I'm I've been in this uh this period of life where I try to find my way to yes. So if you ask me and if it's possible, I'm going to say yes. And this was just another great opportunity to something I got an opportunity to say yes to. And it turned out fantastic. And just the money that they were, had the opportunity to raise and supporting special Olympics and our brothers and sisters who, who are in those categories. That's just amazing work that's being done. Uh, I want to send a special shout out to my man, Lyle and Fox Valley comedy. I got to go to his comedy show last night. It was 
good. And Lyle, you always put on a great production. I always appreciate you. And thank you for bringing laughter into our region. We appreciate that. I want to send a shout out to uh, my niece-in-law, Jesse Martin. She had a birthday. It was a fantastic time. And here's where I want to shout out too, because, you know, I get the opportunity to go to these places and see new things. Well, there, she had her birthday party at this new place in the Kosh called Pickles and Bags. Now, Pickles and Bags, if you don't know what this is, this was awesome. It was fantastic. It is a place that has indoor pickle ball courts along with cornhole courts and a bar. So I could have a cocktail. Then when I got festive, I went out there and played some pickleball. And then I jumped into a cornhole tournament. Oh, while I got to have a cocktail. This was fantastic. It was a great atmosphere. The service was high level. It is such a nice establishment. I can't say that enough. So if you don't know about it, it's right there in the big mall off of 20th Street, uh, like 20th in uh, Oregon. I think that's 20th in Oregon. Um, Check that out. I can't explain it enough but if you're looking for something to do pickle pickles and uh bags is the joint to go check out and hopefully we'll be having them on soon here on the cash as a guest so we can talk more about that business okay lona we got one last thing to do okay all right you have three choices choice one share some more parting words of wisdom with the Kosh listeners. Choice two, tell us what would yourself today tell your 13-year-old self? And choice three, you can do both, all of the above. So I'm going to go with two. So what I would say to the 13-year-old self is it's not always going to be this way. It does get better. Continue to stay focused because you got something great ahead waiting for you facts all right what'd you think oh me you <laughs> what i think well uh, i think it was great facts, facts it's the yes. cash of course this was nice yes yes and i like the music because i'm a huge jazz person 